Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for uh, Seeds of Truth. We're so happy and grateful that you've, uh, you've been able to join us for this event. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, in June of last year, Dr. Caroline Clark in the Department of Teaching and Learning uh, contacted me about uh, Reading for Justice, which Professor Clark had envisioned as an annual effort uh, to engage the OSU community and beyond in a work of literature that interrogates uh, racial and social injustice. And Stamped was the first book uh, selected. But while the pandemic has kind of altered many of the original collaborative aspirations for this year, I saw an opportunity for our undergraduate students to uh, create, a, uh, create new work in response to Stamped and to add their own personal artistry to this sort of ongoing urgent conversation. And especially in light of many of the performance opportunities for our students that were also lost uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so it's, it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce you to the, the four undergraduate students who created this work. Um, first is uh, Deja Mapp, who is a junior at, at OSU, and uh, she made this uh, play uh, for us, but was inspired by her family. And uh, we're really excited to have Deja here. Uh, we also have Varsha Babu, who's a, a first year theater major from Knoxville. And uh, what Varsha is really interested in is uh, accurate representation um, in the mainstream media. And a lot of her work is centered around the South Asian community. And uh, she's studying to be a performer and, and hopes to, uh, to share her story and her love for activism through her art. So it's awesome to have Varsha here. Uh, Kate France is a third year theater major at Ohio State. Uh, her past works mostly have been in acting and musical composition, and um, she's also a visual artist uh, based here in Columbus. So it's great to have Kate here as well. Uh, and Nia Blevins is uh, a, a fourth year at uh, Ohio State and majoring in theater, and she's she's been acting since 2006, and uh, that started after she joined an improv team in Dayton, Ohio, and she. Uh, is really interested in civic engagement through the arts. Now, our four undergraduate artists were mentored through this process through two absolutely fantastic graduate students. Um, and the process became a wonderful collaboration of undergraduate and graduate. And uh, uh, it, it was so great to have uh, Leah Dewey, who is um, a second year master's student in, in our Department of uh, Theater, Film and Media Arts. Uh, her inter interdisciplinary thesis research incorporates political and social movement theory to in interrogate uh, BIPOC inward facing activism in the American theater industry. And uh, it was phenomenal having Leah as one of our, one of our mentors. And uh, the other mentor is Aviva Neff, who's a fifth year PhD candidate from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Aviva is studying uh, black and mixed black representation in literature, history and performance. And is, uh, and is really uh, just was, uh, Aviva and Leah were indispensable as mentors. So it is, um, it was my privilege to watch all of this unfold over uh, a number of months. And we are just thrilled to be able to share this with you today. And we uh, finally, sorry, we'd like to, um, we'd like to thank uh, Clara Davison and uh, her team in the Office of Engagement for organizing this event. They did a phenomenal job. Uh, and we'd also like to thank um, Andy Shelton, the interim chair of uh, theater, film and media arts and uh, Briggs Cormier, our external relations coordinator and Rachel Barnes, our fiscal manager for all of their support and guidance and all the resources they provided. And uh, finally, we also wanna uh, thank Nicholas Shannon Stewart and uh, Ashley Dunn, two other graduate students who uh, offered invaluable expertise along the way. So um, without further ado, we'd like to share these, uh, these three pieces with you. Stop and stare. I see, I see a life unlived pain etched on their faces, reflecting the very fear inside me. History glares at my back, my words worthless under their gaze. I see a pit of black, drowning out the light and through that void. 
appears the face of hope smiling back. I know this face. I know whose eyes into which I stare. My reflection glares back, angered by my own inaction. I'm silent, but I'm not still. I reflect the very force of hope that drives our deeds, but will this monument withstand? There is a light at the end of this road, and I know that there's still a long way to go. long as my head is high and i walk with pride go with the strength inside take every step and stride no chance will pass me by long as i always try won't let my passions die and as long as i'm alive the future
quiet starry night in the Garden of Eden, Adam, parched on a rock for the evening, overlooking the land, pondering the reason for his being. His skin brown like the soil, hair locked up in twigs and coils and figs. Meanwhile, there's Eve, picking his hair to get her fix. I wish life remained this simple until Lucifer decided to meddle with his tricks. From here on, I refrain from my involvement, but hopefully my creations can appreciate my resolvement, find love, compromise, and spend time often. But let's see for ourselves what they've been involved in. My Lord, nothing gives me more fulfillment than serving you. Your creations are pure and true. Until the end of my days, I will still give you praise. And by the way, I've been meaning to ask about the woman Eve and what is her task? Sorry to have starts with you. From your curves to your delicate structure expresses the Lord's compulsive perfection. Hidden beneath his righteous mask, no one dared to even ask. However, you are indeed his finest task. Female, where is the male? Thou has startled me. He's tending to the coconut trees. How does a creature from the Lord's creation speak like me? Unfortunately, my dear, I mustn't tire for long because we all know the almighty God is never wrong. However, I know that there hasn't been a day since you have engaged in all and curiosity at the tree that can set you both free. I bet you're wondering why God would forbid you from eating that fruit. Or is it that he's hiding the truth? Because it is his will and everything was made real here out of his goodness and mercy. So I must obey my father through faith so that my spirit not get tainted and dirty. Are you sure that's what he wants? You not to question his will? I'm sure our Lord's will is knowing what makes the human heart fulfilled. Your skin is like the soil and others like you live further in the land in toil. Well, I don't know. I don't want my Lord upset. However, it looks so scrumptious. Is it true that we will die if we eat of it? Tune into your sixth sense, because you believe that nonsense. Of course you will not die. On the contrary, you will open your third eye. So why not take a bite? Well... Hello, my name is Deja Mack. I'm the director and the producer of The Dance That Rose. This play is very dear to my heart because I'm not the only little black girl that has experienced racism, but I won't be the only little black girl that has rose above it. Hope you enjoy my play.
They ask me why I dance. I say, why not? As you can see, dancing is how I illustrate my emotions. Dancing is my way of running from the tragedies my ancestors face. Dancing is my way of moving my feet to the beat when I'm starting to sink. I dance because freedom is calling me off the stage. I run, I jump, I leap into the arms of Nina Simone, Maya Angelou, and Lauren Hill in order to feel the warmth of black women harmonizing against my breast. I want to feel light, like a bird in the sky. I want to float until dawn becomes my new sunrise. So I yell out hallelujah, because one day I will rise. My grandparents born into a time when the Great Depression and Jim Crow was extremely prevalent. My grandpas fighting in the Korean War and was never respected for their courage and service. A biracial grandma struggling for equality and concerned if she's too black or not black enough. A grandma that can't pass and grew up in the evil hearts of Selma, Alabama. Both men and women trying to survive and hoping for a better life for their kids and the next generation. My parents born in the 50s where they experienced Jim Crow, segregation, and the civil rights movement. Verbally abused by the color of their skin, never feeling accepted in a country that despised black bodies constantly envisioning a better life for their kids. My siblings came in like a wrecking ball, taking over Hollywood, the music industry, the film industry, and the fashion world. But the talents this generation possessed never excused racism and harassment to come from the top. Racism wasn't as blatant, but it never disappeared. Me, my nieces, and nephews thought we grew up in a perfect world where everything was fair and free until we got a rude awakening with people like Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, or George Floyd. The realization that we are still dealing with this plague that my grandparents, parents, and my siblings endured. But our generation may be the one to eradicate this deadly plague once and for all. This journey is a battle, but without dancing through the struggle, you will never see the resolution. Well done, the silent applause. It's such a strange advent of Zoom. Um, is it time to take over for Q&A? Are we ready? All right, hey everyone. Thank you so much to the audience who's out there. Thank you so much to the artists and to Kevin, Clara, Leah, Jade, the whole team. Um, I'm very excited to move us into this next phase of our webinar. Um, we have a few questions prepared for our panelists and we're gonna go through those 
However, I would like to once again invite the audience to please feel free to pop any questions into the chat and my wonderful colleague Leah will um, do her best to sort of moderate and make sure that we don't miss anything. Uh, so just sit tight, listen up, and we're going to get things started. Right, panelists? Are we good? Awesome. Okay. I love the energy. Great. Well, first of all, congratulations to all of you. And thank you so much for sharing this work with us this evening. Um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful, it's always wonderful to convene and use our art and our talents to um, start some of the big conversations that otherwise are, are difficult to um, find a way into. So uh, without further ado, let me ask you our first question of the evening. And I would love it if you would tell us a little bit about your artistry. Um, was this your first time devising, right? So creating new work. And uh, could you share what your process was like? And I'm just going to open that up to anyone who wants to start talking first, can go ahead and just seize it. Yeah, I can start. Um, this is absolutely my first devised piece, like kind of figuring it out. And um, I guess the process that really involved with it, I was just walking down High Street one day and I was like, there's so much art out here. And it's it was just beautiful. And so, you know, I kept telling myself like over and over at the little bit in the beginning, it was like, I kept telling myself, like, it doesn't matter if I speak up, it, my voice doesn't matter. And it was just like, you have to say something. And um, it was just my honest reaction to what I saw. So that was where it came from. That's great. Thank you, Varsha. So Varsha's talking a little bit about like how even this project and immersing herself in it kind of created a little bit of a transformation, right, for the individual. That's awesome. Um, one of our other panelists like to share a little about your um, experience devising theater and then your experience more specifically with this project. Yeah, um, I'll go. Uh, so for me, this was my first ever uh, devised piece of work. Um, out of my whole entire time dealing with acting and theater. Uh, and it was very, at first, nerve wracking. I thought it was going to be easy to make a piece because I always, for one, consider myself someone that has a lot to say. Um, but the problem was with this project was I didn't know how I was going to say it. Uh, I got the inspiration from chapter three of this book. Um, it's called A Different Atom. And when I first read it, it really hit home for me, a different atom. What does that mean? And who said that there was a different atom? I wanted to know who said that and why. And um, if you guys get a chance to read the book and read chapter three, you'll see there's a lot of um, scientists and philosophers who had this theory that um, black people came from a different atom, therefore we were a different species. So I wanted to see if there was any art really created or associated with that with that name and uh, I did a lot of googling and uh, one day I came to one of our stamp meetings and I was talking about it and our good friend Kate over there told me that she could draw she could do some illustrations and I mean they just turned out so beautiful and once she sent them over to me I knew exactly what I needed to look for um, and exactly what I need to look up. Yeah it all starts with a lot of googling doesn't it? That's great. Thank you so much, Nia. Deja, uh, would you like to add? Yes. Um, so I've never did anything, created my own piece as well. I mean, I've been in a lot of things, but I've never created my own. And same way with Nia, I was just kind of confused on what I wanted to do because I'm always the one that's speaking up as well. So I started talking to my family and just kind of looking around my family and was like, wow, we really have a lot of history within my family. And after reading the book, considering how a lot of families were separated from each other, or if they were together, it was a struggle. And so I wanted to show the, I guess, our resiliency within our family um, and just showing that Black families, you know, we've been through a lot, but we're still pushing forward and we're still getting by and we're still surviving at the end of the day. So that was my inspiration overall. 
That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Deja. We love when you can look at your own family for um, for inspiration. Kate, did you want to add something as sort of working as a graphic designer or are you just thumbs up to the panelists, whatever you feel comfortable with? Yeah, yeah, Kate, thank you so much. Um, that's awesome. I'm going to move on to our next sort of preordained question um, before we, we move into audience stuff. So, um, Hey, actually, this is this is great. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of combine this with one of the audience questions that we've received about how you each chose the um, images and sort of um, inspiring materials that are inspirational materials that you included in your pieces. So how did you pick the locations that you visited? How did you choose which images you included in your slideshow? How did you choose which videos of your family you included? Um, and whoever wants to start can just take it away. Um, I can go. Um, so I remember like when I first thought about it, I wanted to do um, something on the lines of Washa and kind of showing around like the artwork in Cincinnati. Um, but then I just somehow got this idea that I realized my niece and my sister are dancers. So I said, why don't we show a dancing piece? Um, and also just getting pictures around my house and showing my grandparents and my parents and since they were born in those times that it was really hard um and just showing their growth so i guess like the pictures that i had around my house that were um, inspiration and then could knowing my sister and my niece dance and just having them in there and doing a very like inspirational short little dance to kind of put together everything that's great. Thank you. Uh, Nia or Varsha, would you like to talk a little bit about your images? Nia, you want to yeah. go ahead? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, so when I first started, I Google searched the creation of Adam. And of course, the big painting comes up. And of course, the person in that painting is not um, Black. So I was not sure where I was going to go with this because I didn't know exactly what to do. So I started thinking about what I'm made of and what reflects me. So I started to look up like locked natural people in the woods. Uh, I started looking up like ancient African history uh, pictures. And from there, just putting in those keywords, it helped me bring up a lot of images. And then from there, I was able to kind of just cipher through and pick the images that spoke strongly to me, like especially the, the man with his shirt off and the dreadlocks inside of the, the forest. That was like one of my main pieces on my mood board because I made a little mood board for this. Um, and that every time I look at that image, it just draw, it drew, drew me in to continue to look for more beautiful black art that shows us in a natural setting. So I was looking for beautiful black art in a natural setting and Kate helped out with that a lot too. So. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Actually, Kate, would you like to add anything about um, your process providing some of those images for Nia to use? Sure, yeah, I hadn't done a ton of uh, digital art leading up to this point because I usually just paint and stuff or drew stuff, but I was like, if I'm gonna contribute to this in any way, um, I'll do it through like this, like the university provided us those iPads and Apple pencils, like this will be awesome. I'll do pictures for you, Nia. <laughs> And um, in that, I just did a lot of um, like the, I tried to find similar pictures to the ones that she gave me. Cause I didn't, I, I wanted to make something she wanted specifically for the piece. So I like found like vibrant backgrounds, like anything like it, uh, cause it's really different from my own style. I normally do things that are very like realistic and like it, it has to look almost like a picture. <laughs> and I had to let go of all of that to do this. <laughs> and I, I was like, let's make it look like these pictures like she wants and then and it all came together really nicely i think so too that's really great to hear how the collaborations just within this group function so thank you so much kate Farsha, would you like to speak a little bit about the cities that you um incorporated into this work because i know we had an audience question someone's interested in um how you chose to center this in columbus and knoxville and where else talk to us Oh, yeah, sure. I feel like the answer is not as um, cool as the places that were eventually shown. It was just, you know, where I was, where I was at. I mean, obviously, I'm here in Columbus, and there's so much art, you know, um, in the short north area. I was there a lot. Um, 
you know, looking for different pieces. And my sister is actually in Eugene, Oregon. So I was there for a minute. I was also back home in um, Knoxville. And I guess like, for me, I oftentimes have difficulty, you know, like speaking out, like that's something that just scares me so much. So it was like, well, how else do I know how to do activism or it was like writing, painting, it was what all of these other artists were doing. So it was either how much street art or how little street art there was. So there's only one photo from Knoxville. And that made me so angry, but then I wanted to supplement it with other cities because I, it, it, it's not a small movement at all. That's really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, so sometimes it is not about how much is there, but how little is there in some places. Uh, so thank you so much for that insight. All right, panelists, I'm gonna throw sort of a, a, a harder question at you, I guess. Um, so we were all drawn together by um, Ibram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds's stamp from the beginning, um, or stamp remix, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. Um, so we, we know where the similarities and parallels and conversations are happening within our, um, our performances. Would one of you, all of you, um, be interested in sharing a little bit about where you notice the differences between these three pieces and how do you find um, the meaning in, in those differences, I guess? I'm going to invite any of you to, to take it away. Um, so for me, I was blown, first of all, ladies, Varsha, Deja, I already sent you guys chats, but I was blown away by their pieces. Um, I felt like it was a very, both of their pieces were a real piece of information, history, very grounded, um, and subjects that I find very hard to talk about, um, and they made art out of it. So I was very, very blown away by that. I feel like with my piece in the reason why I asked to go in the middle of you two was because I felt like mine was a little bit on the the folktale, fairy fairy tale side, um, a story that hasn't really been told before, and I wanted to do that though because there were so many stories of, you know, the things the ladies you know have talked on the racism, the civil rights things, things like that, but I hadn't really seen anything. I hadn't seen a black folktale before, so I wanted to create one, one of my own, um, and that's kind of where I where I started at. So pretty much my entire script is fictional and made up, uh, in whatever my words are. And I felt like Barsha and Deja's were something so real and so moving and so evoking. So that's my answer. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nia. Um, Varsha, Deja, you want to add anything? about some of the differences and what those differences mean to you. Um, just like Nia said, everyone's was amazing. And I really um, love Nia's um, folktale because like she said, I've never seen a black folktale before either. And it was so different seeing that we're so used to hearing this story of um, Adam and Eve being a white man or a white woman, but to actually see us involved in it and like people of different colors, which is amazing. And um, even with Varsha's piece, with the different art, um, going around the city and seeing, you know, people, um, people of color just expressing themselves. And I think ours was on the same lines of that. Basically, she expressed herself with the street art and I expressed myself within my family, but Although all of ours is some like it's different, but it's still similar in a way because it's basically promoting and trying to show um, the realism and the beautiful side of Black people and people of color, which you rarely ever see um, on mainstream. So I guess that was like the similarities for us and the and the differences for us are just how we decided to go about it. So. That's great. Thank you so much, Deja. Varsha, did you want to add any final thoughts? Yeah, maybe just one. Like, 
I feel like the pursuit towards being anti-racist, like that's a journey and it's a process. It's full of like self-reflection, questioning your ideals. And so I feel like, you know, we read the book, took a piece and ran with it. And I think that's why our pieces were so different, but collectively they still represent those anti-racist ideals from um, Jason Reynolds, Ibram X. Kennedy, their work. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys did a great job already covering it. Great. Thank you so much, Varsha, for getting us right into the next question. That's so perfect. I love that you, you really took us there. Um, our next question, and then we have one more after this. Um, well, I guess two more kind of. Our next question is uh, in Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism and You, um, the authors discuss the history of racist ideas that have led to the widespread oppression of black and brown people. And these ideas dominate American society today. So how do you find your, how do you find your pieces in conversation with Stamped from the beginning and its pursuit to um, discuss, highlight, and sort of um, reveal these oppressive systems. So how does your work relate to the um, ethics and goals of Ibram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds's book? And Varsha, you already kind of got us started. So um, if you wanna pick it up again or invite one of your other co-panelists to, to go for it. Varsha, you wanna keep going? Yeah, I'll do it. It'll love be it. Great. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there is one um, thing in Stamped that got me. I don't know if you guys read the acknowledgments, but I read it and that was one of my favorite parts of the entire book. And I literally, I will quote, I will not know. Okay. So Jason Reynolds says, Thank you, young people. I wish I could name you all, but I would much rather you name yourselves. And I was like, oh my gosh, this book was meant for young people. It's meant for kids. It's meant to not to overwhelm, but to just say like, this is your call for action. Now is the moment. And it was saying like, you can't just text it. You can't just post about it. You have to you have to make an impact. And that's when you get to name yourself. You get to create something, you know, with both hands and really make an impact. So I think that it was a direct response to Stamped, directly responding to their words when we get to say, hey, this is what we think. We're all young people saying our opinions matter and this is the art to show how passionate we are. That's great. Wow, that was so beautiful, Varsha. Um, I agree with 100% everything that you said. Um, for me, my piece was just <clears throat> in a response to Sam Two. Uh, what I wanted to respond to specifically was just the history of black and brown people, of course. I wanted to I guess, re respond to the scientists and the philosophers that originally said that Black people and Brown people came from a different species. Um, that really stuck with me. And religion is something that is so old and long, and it's something that's been practiced for so long. So with these racist ideas coming from the beginning, it just really I wanted to respond to that. I wanted to respond to the idea of there being a Black Adam. I just wanted to put it in their faces. I didn't know who exactly I was talking to in the book at the time, but I just needed someone to know that, okay, the, and if there was a Black Adam, then what? What? What's gonna, like, is there any difference? Is there, you know? Great, thank you. Deja? Um. Well, yeah, mines definitely relate to the book as well. And I think mines came from just reading it and you see the generations of black people from starting to slavery when they came over to America and then to um, present day. And I really wanted to highlight that in my um, film, just showing the generations of my family, like how it began for us and, and how it is to me and my niece's generation, my nephew's generation and 
as I said in, in my fam, we thought it was like a happy-go-lucky world. Everything was okay. You know, they already did all that fighting. But in reality, no, we still have to continue this fight and we still have to be able to rise above it and make change because it's not going to get better for the next generation or generations after us. Because, I mean, you know, like we're still doing the same thing that our um, grandparents and our parents worked so hard for and we still have to continue that so I think that's where my relation my relationship with the book and my film kind of like played out with each, one another so yeah that's really great Kate did you want to add something yeah since I didn't get to make like a full-on work of my own when I think about Nia's it um what it really connects for me is the idea that racism started long before anyone thought about it. I mean, anyone here thinks it does because everyone's like, oh yeah, the 1800s and like America's always been racist. I mean, it has, but <laughs> um, like 1415 was the first racist. I remember that from like the very beginning of the book, it says like in 1415, it is so long ago. And the idea of creating something that starts at the very beginning like even if you're not Christian and like the creation isn't you, this is a story about that. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just need to say it's so amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's beautiful. Yeah, and it just reminded me of how um, that story probably is more accurate than any creation story that's been whitewashed. But you also, it makes you think about like our history, a lot of the book, like there's a sentence I remember was talking about how when all of our education has been whitewashed in the same way that the creation was. And it, I'm thinking back to where it says like everyone thought that Abraham Lincoln was the best and that's what we learned in school, but he was talking out of three mouths and they were all different and no one ever talks about it. And I think all of these works connect in the way that um, it's talking about it. Um, that's amazing. I am going to do something mean and teachery to you all because I want to make sure we have time for our audience members to respond. And I'm going to ask you our last question before turning it over to audience um, Q&A. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you to respond to this question in one sentence, okay? And I know that we don't have like a type in front of us so we can't see exactly how long your sentence is, but I want you to practice being concise because this is a tough question i think i think you can do it though all right so similar to the quote varsha introduced in stamped and anti racism anti-racism in you authors ibram x kendi and jason reynolds write to know the past is to know the present to know the present is to know yourself so in one sentence can you tell us what does this work tell us about you Or if we want to rework that question um, from what Varsha said, how is this work assisting in naming yourself? How do you name yourself with this work? Or with art in general? Anyone can start. I think that from both of the quotes that you mentioned, it says that what we're doing now matters and one day it'll be history. Um, for me, I think the sentence would be, I am a part of history and what are you gonna do about it? Um, something for me would be I'm telling and showing my history. Um, for me, it would say that um, I'm on the right side of history. Beautiful. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Um, let's turn it over to the audience because we have some great feedback from the audience here. Um, so Sue wants to know, first of all, congratulations. These films were amazing. Sue wants to know, um, are there plans for wider distribution? And I'm going to bundle this in with a bigger question, which is, you know, um, where is the future of your project? What is the future of your projects? 
Um, I guess I can go. Well, first and foremost, um, I want to really thank Kevin McClatchy, who really uh, encouraged all of us to stay on top of this project because there were times we kind of veered away as a group just because of everything that's happening right now. So he did such a wonderful job at really encouraging us to put it all on the page. And then when we put too much on the page, he encouraged us to take some of it out and to calm down. But no, no I'm just kidding. Um, so for me, when I first wrote my film, it was 13 minutes long and it was not poetic. And it was an entire stage play that had stage directions and it was very over the top. And um, I wanted to act it out. I wanted to, if I could have run into the theater, I would have done it, budget permitted us, all of that. But the future of my project, um, I shortened it. I made it into something poetic and I did have more of the poem. I don't know if I plan to, I don't know what I plan to do with it. Uh, maybe just keep it to myself, maybe read it to my future children or go maybe turn it into a children's book. I was thinking it's super cool. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just plan to keep it to myself for now. That's amazing. Thank you, Nia. Deja Varsha Kate, plans for the future? Um, at the moment, I did not have any plans. Um, I just kind of showed my family and just, it was kind of like a slideshow for them to see everyone when they were younger and stuff like that. Um, but maybe since my minor is theater and I'm so interested in theater, um, maybe one day I can make like my family uh, have a TV show, who knows, and just show the history of all of us. So, that might be the future for it, but we'll see. I have plans for the future of the piece. So just let's make that clear. I have plans for it and you better get on board, Ms. Deja, you better get on board. Uh, but thank you so much. Future plans, real quickly, real quickly. Me here, Varsha Kate, yes? Oh, I will illustrate Nia's children's book and that is it. Beautiful, beautiful, I love it. Boom, partnership. Varsha, what do you wanna add? The future of this piece for me is to help give a voice to those people who just maybe they don't have one right now. It's just to help out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I'm going to turn it back to our audience questions because they're great. Uh, Varsha, Abby wants to know, um, how do you think the anonymous nature of street art influenced or contributed to your piece? I think the fact that street art is anonymous and kind of illegal sometimes. I think it was just another sign of rebellion that was, that that it's very like tangible, you can see it. And I think that I kind of, I felt like it was a reflection of my own anxieties sometimes. It was just a way that it was like walking down the street and then I, I would see something that would really strike me. And I don't know who said it. I, I don't know who felt that way, but I felt that way. And I didn't always want to put my name next to my feelings, but it was just something that I saw myself in and I wanted to see more of. Mm, I love that. And I do think that that's important because in theater, we are very often asked to put our names next to our feelings. Um, and that's difficult and complicated. And that's why we love it, um, which I'm going to use to segue into this real juicy question coming from uh, OSU Theater and Film's very own Jake. Hey, Jake. Uh, Jake wants to know, um, how are you taking care of yourselves while we were, while you were um, engaging in this work? Jake says that this is motivating and about perseverance, but loss is also very potent, right? We have loss from racist violence. We have loss from COVID-19. We, we are living in an era of, of, of mass grief. So can you talk about how you navigated that sort of tension and how you protected yourself while in the process of navigating that tension? Um, I think that, uh, again, uh, Kevin did a really good job at helping moderate these hard, hard conversations because we were meeting weekly um, since probably November of last year. We've been meeting weekly, uh, and it. I just had these ladies, Varsha, Deja, Kate, Kevin, Leah, Aviva. I've had them in this little safe haven for myself. I've been keeping them very selfish. They've been a part of my self-care team, as I like to call them. Um, 
and just meeting with them every week and just being able to say what's on my mind about because uh, we're, we're talking about this book and about our feelings every single week and just creating this perfect space to speak my mind um, was just very, very helpful. And it just helped, I don't know, it just really helped with everything. Um, and just having people who understand that, you know, not everything is normal for you and that you live in a different place or in a different world as most people. So just having those encouraging friends in this group, that's how I took care of myself for the last week or weeks of her. Yeah, thank you. It is really important that you have a strong ensemble. You have people who you can trust to, to work with you or at least witness alongside you. So finding that is so critical to all of our work. Uh, Deja, did you wanna add something? Yes, um, this group definitely helped a lot because in the beginning, I was literally stressing myself out um, with being in different organizations, trying to maintain that and then my classwork. And also just seeing everything that's happening on TV. I, not the one that usually like express my emotions, I kind of keep it bottled in, but I literally broke down and just kind of cried. But having this, um, having these meetings and being able to express what's on our mind and then having those um, other supportive groups, such as your friends, your family, and being able to talk to them and actually get what out that you want to say was very helpful. Because at first, I was not taking care of myself, but I figured it out through, along the way. So, yes. That's what's important. We're, we're glad you're, you're here and on board with us now. Kate, did you want to add anything? You're, you can add a thumbs up. Great. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, okay, cool. So we're down to some of the last questions in the last couple of minutes of our panel. And Nandini wants to know, uh, first of all, that these were well done and very much appreciated. But have any has, has doing a project such as this made you more open to um, creating things like this in the future? Like, Do you see yourself doing more original work? Um, like definitely, um, there's, there was this one moment when I was filming by, uh, the state house and this random guy comes up to me and it's like COVID. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? But, um, he like came up to me. He's like, you're doing good work. You're, you're doing good work. He just keeps on walking. And I was like, what? I mean, it's so like creating art also creates a community and you realize that you're representing people like maybe that guy had no idea what I was working on but was glad that I was working on it is that representing something for a cause if you're at the state house like what are you doing but um definitely that that like feeling of doing something good like that's definitely going to stick with me and if I can do that through my art then I will be doing it Great. Anyone else? Thank you, Varsha. Um, I'll go. Um, I'll definitely do some more work because in the beginning, I never found myself to be creative at all. Um, but as I started showing people my work and just spinning spin out different ideas, people was like, yeah, this is actually really good. Like, you should continue. So I would definitely continue on because it was fun and it's amazing to see your work being completed and see how, you know, it started into now. So, yeah. Great, thank you, Deja. Nia, Kat, Kate, how are you feeling about the future? Um, yes, I most definitely do more of my own devised work. Um, as long as I can uh, continue to take criticism and, and uh, compliments, as long as I can deal with that, I think I can deal with continuing to do more of my work. Yeah. Especially the compliments. We love compliments. <laughs> right? Right? Kate, yeah, you're going to keep it going? Yeah, I think this has definitely made me more open to all kinds of work because I would always put myself in a box like, oh, I can only do one thing. I can only act in things and that's it. But creating things just so rewarding. Yeah, and I do think I just want to say like as a, as a fellow artist, as a fellow woman of color, like often artists, young artists are made to believe that you can only be one thing, 
But the beautiful thing about theater, about performance is that literally every skill you have will one day become useful and will become important. So it is, it is really, it's empowering to be able to say like, hey, yeah, I can write, I can act, I can dance, I can draw. Um, and I just, I really think that you should not feel limited by, um, by trying to be one thing. Um, that's really great. Last comment from the chat is Sandra wants to share that they're really proud of this work and that you represent the present and the future. And I, I couldn't agree, I could not agree anymore um, with that statement. So um, with that, we're gonna close our Q and A session. Thank you so much to the panelists, the artists, those of you who shared your work with us this evening. This was really, really beautiful. Can we try like an unmuted round of applause? Will that be weird? Kevin, will you, will you give us a clap too? Yeah? Yay, excellent work. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming and, uh, and sharing this with, with us. I, I just wanted to say, Two things very quickly um, to say that uh, whatever whatever organizational help or support uh, or insight that I gave, I, I have to say that it's dwarfed by what I learned from from Varsha and Nia and Deja and Kate, and it's also dwarfed by what I learned from Aviva and Leah as facilitators and 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 mentors and and how how they uh, consistently uh, just knew how to navigate that line. And uh, I just feel like that, that was uh, such an amazing experience uh, in addition to the great work that you all, uh, that you all produced. So um, again, thank you uh, to the four uh, artists, uh, our two mentors, uh, Viva, great job uh, moderating this discussion. And uh, thank you again, everyone out there who, uh, who made the time to, to share this with us. Uh, means more to us than you know.